Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. In this video, I'm going to be uh, knocking a, or removing a 24 tooth trick wheel off a uh, LS crankshaft. This happens to be a 6 liter LS motor uh, around 2000 2001. And I'm going to be taking this 24 tooth wheel off the uh, crankshaft and we're going to be installing a 58 tooth wheel. So, in preparation for that process, we've the uh, let me back up. This, this wheel has to be oriented on this crankshaft in a precise location. And this hole right here is the key. There's a special tool you can buy that fits into that hole and it fits into that hole right there. And it orients this wheel in a manner so that when you push it on, it's located in the right spot. Well, that tool is $200. Well, I think there's an easier and cheaper way to do it. And I'm going to try it. So what I've done is this wheel is mounted on here now. So I'm, I'm going to assume it's aligned right now. And so what we've done is taken a Sharpie and marked it right here through this, this arrow right here, this part right here. And that Sharpie and that sharp that mark should line up when we're done. So what I've done is I've taken the, tooth, the 58 tooth wheel and put the mark on a similar location. Here, that hole right there by my pinky is the uh, same as that hole there, alignment hole. And I put the line on the same uh, pointed shape symbol on this thing. And so when we take that wheel off and put this one on with the two line, with that line lined up, we'll be lined up. So that's uh, the cheap way of, uh, or the, uh, I won't say cheap, the inexpensive way of putting a 58 tooth wheel or swapping a 24 tooth for a 58 tooth wheel on an LS crankshaft. Um, the reason I'm doing this, you might ask why I'm putting a 58 tooth wheel, um, is I have an LC9, which is a 5.3 liter, it's a 2009 5.3 liter engine. And uh, I'm going to be replacing the 5.3 with a 6.0 liter engine uh, from the, the 6.0s, like I said, 2000, 2001. So the LC9s are 2009, so they have 58 tooth trigger wheels. So I can't run the 6 liter with a 24 tooth wheel in a 2009 vehicle. So I'm going to swap trigger wheels. And that's the reason I'm doing this. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take tape. We're going to protect these journals. We're going to wrap these journals pretty thick with some tape. So that we don't have, so that when we knock this thing off, it won't hurt these journals here. And then once, once we get this trigger wheel off, we're going to heat that trigger wheel up to about approximately 500 degrees. And it's not very complicated. You just put it in a, bar, I have a barbecue grill that I uh, redesigned or re, re, uh, replumbed the jet so that it drags all the heat into one specific spot. I actually use it for a rod heater, but I'm going to try to use that same grill to heat this, uh, this trigger wheel up to about 500 degrees. And then uh, you have one chance to put that thing on and get it aligned. And you gotta do, you gotta do it quick. So that's gonna be the fun part of this project. And uh, so we'll, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to knock this 24 tooth trigger wheel off now. And then uh, I'll show you what it looks like when the trigger wheel has been removed. All right, as explained before, I have now removed the 24 tooth trigger wheel off this crankshaft. This is a six liter LS crankshaft around 2000, 2001. And before I moved the trigger wheel, I taped over the journals to protect them in case the wheel fell off and uh, nicked these journals. So I taped over them to keep it from happening. So as I knocked the uh, trigger wheel off, it came apart. There's two pieces to it. Here's, here's the pieces right here. So the, trigger, the 24 tooth trigger wheel came apart, but I did, I was successful in knocking it, knocking it off. So I just took this hammer and I tapped on it approximately here and approximately right down here on either on 180 degrees apart and then by hitting it hard enough i was able to knock it off the crankshaft i hear it's a 0 0.007 to 0.008 interference fit so i'm now about to try to mount this 58 tooth trigger wheel and I'm, what, I'm, what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna stand the crankshaft upright and have my uh, shop assistant hold it up vertical and i'm gonna heat this trigger wheel up I'm gonna hold either side here and the other side right there with uh, vice grips. And I'm gonna heat this thing up to approximately 500, 550 degrees and hopefully it'll expand and I can just lower, lower this thing right on the crank and when it cools, it'll be mounted. So that's what we're about to do. And uh, I'm gonna have to just eyeball the alignment with these black marks I've made. I put another mark right here by my pinky because when I'm in front of the crankshaft holding onto these two sides, I won't be able to line it up with my eyes very well with the mark over here on the side. So I made another mark right here on the front of it, or what's now called the front. All right, we're now about to place this uh, trigger wheel on here. Let's see if we can... 
perfect. Hold it right there. Are you hold it? Mm -hmm. yeah, it, ain't, it ain't cool down yet. I think they'll move it. Okay, let it cool. So we've now placed a 582 trigger wheel on a 2000 LS crank. I'll show you what I did. So I made black marks on the wheel before I uh, heated up. And now I've lined the marks up and uh, I'm gonna let this wheel cool down and see if it uh, tightens up against this crank. It kind of was more loose than I expected, so I hope this works. We will see. I'm not gonna touch it, I'm gonna let it cool down and uh, you folks out there in YouTube land can watch Steel Cool Down with me. Let me discuss why I'm doing the 58 tooth wheel. I don't know if I said it earlier, but um, I have a 2009 GMC Sierra. It's got the uh, computer that needs the 58 tooth wheel. I'm putting a six liter from a probably approximately 2000, 2001 truck. And uh, the six liter used a 24 tooth wheel, so I'm having to replace the wheel with a 58 tooth wheel. And uh, I'll go into a, the details in another video about how why this is going to work. Uh, one of the keys to making it work is you have to disconnect the MAF sensor and let it run off the MAF set that's MAF, let it run off the MAF, the MAF sensor alone. And then it will compensate and run a six liter run a six liter with the uh, 5.3 liter software without having to change anything. But I'll go into more detail in another video on that. So let's see if it's cooled down any. Yeah, it's locked on. It's turning the crank. See it? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the vice grips now. Success. We have now removed a 24 tooth trigger wheel and installed a 58 tooth trigger wheel on a 2000 2001 uh, 6 liter crankshaft. So we've effectively converted this uh, from a Gen 3 to a Gen 4 crankshaft. And uh, the tool that you normally buy, so I think it's called Goodson, or I'll put a link in the description of the video from the, the professional tool you can buy. But if you don't want to buy the tool, you can uh, do what I did. So uh, basically I use a barbecue grill with the jets rearranged to uh, heat metal parts. And I uh, heated up outside on a barbecue grill or a propane grill. And I got it up to approximately, uh, I had it up to approximately 500 degrees. There's some discoloration over here, some heat discoloration right here. But I had this side up to approximately 500 degrees. And this side over here was approximately 200 and 220 to 250 degrees. I couldn't get the heat on this side because if I, if I moved, the flame over here that cooled down so i wanted the, the flame on the thickest part of the metal because i felt like that's what would uh, take the most to uh, expand i just thought some of you might be interested in seeing how i heated up the uh 58 tooth trigger wheel what i did was i took some uh, high temperature sealant and i sealed up the, uh, the vents all the way around the perimeter and then i drilled new vents in the top and the new vents is where all the flames coming out. There's no, there's no flame coming out around. That's a, this is over here is false flame. Looks like some of like a reflection. But anyway, so there's no flames coming out of the perimeter of this thing like it was when it was factory. So I grilled new holes. I uh, drilled new holes on the top, on the side there, and on the side there. Right now it's on low. So if I turn it up to full, full blast, that's, that's what it took to heat up the 58-2 uh, trigger wheel. Uh, I got one side to about 500 degrees. The other side was about 220, 250. And uh, that was enough. So um, this is how I use, this is what I used to heat up the trigger wheel. And then I carried it in there with vice grips on either side and uh, placed it on the crank and it cooled right down in, in the right spot. So uh, this, this concept worked and it worked pretty good. So you ought to try this to save yourself $200. Actually, you'd be better off spending the two hundred dollars and not uh, modifying your barbecue grill, more likely. But I got this free, so it was worth a shot. By the way, I also use this to heat up uh, piston rods. I heat up the small end with piston rods, and um, that's what I use to install piston rods on uh, on pistons, at least the press fit type. So um, 
another way of uh, making something, some junk, uh, useful again. I just wanted to follow up on this uh, LS crank with the uh, 24 tooth wheel swapped out for a 58 tooth wheel. I've already re I've removed the tape off the journals and I wanted to see it's been approximately five minutes since we did the project or did the swap and it's now cool enough to touch and this thing is locked on pretty tight. Of course I'm not stressing it really hard but I mean it feels pretty solid. It feels like it's one piece of steel here. So um, let me see if I can pick it up. Yeah, so I can pick it up by the wheel. So yeah, this thing's on there pretty tight. Uh, I don't think it's gonna move. And this was a success. It's pretty cool to save yourself $200 by ingenuity to uh, swap a part over. What's even cooler is running, it's gonna be running this six liter engine off a 5.3 liter program without having to do any changes to the software. So you'll, I think you'll, uh, out there in YouTube land will be amazed about that. So anyway, I'm about to uh, clean this crank, clean the block, and start assembling this LS engine. Stay tuned for the series. Thanks for watching.